The Perpetua Lumina. You really know a company is trying to oversell themselves when they turn to Latin, right? Hello there, so I'd like to start off by reading this marketing spiel which is on this cardboard packaging. It reads, Perpetua is different from all other pencils. Perpetua is technological. The rubber on the Perpetua Lumina, thanks to the... No, wait. It says thank. Okay, then. Thank to the principles of photoluminescence, captures solar and artificial light. Perpetua Lumina gives us an enlightened vision into a more sustainable future. The result of Luce Dentro's research on energy-efficient lighting sources and LSE's recycling and repurposing philosophy. <gasps> wow! That was quite impressive, actually. <clears throat> now, I've already had several shots trying to uh, make a review of this pencil. And I've made several videos that go to like 90% completion. And then I just stop making them and I start all over again. Because I just get very confused because I don't know what angle to actually review this pencil from. Should it be from an economical standpoint? An ecological standpoint? Or maybe I should just review it as a pencil maybe. There's an idea. I might just have to do all three basically. Because this thing is marketed to be more than just a pencil. So this pencil is made out of 80% graphite. And 20% something else, which I uh, presume is some kind of waxy plastic. I know this because I set fire to the end of it. Because I was thinking, well, graphite doesn't burn or melt. And the end of the pencil did definitely catch on fire. And then when I extinguished it... Goodness me. Ugh. That smells like an extinguished candle. And also, each side of the pencil has some faint remnants of some seams from injection moulding. And because it's made out of some composite material, which is 80% graphite, it's actually more like a solid stick of graphite than it is a regular pencil. Which means it will last for ages. It's basically like buying a whole box of pencils in one. Except it doesn't feel exactly like a pencil when you're using it. You know how a pencil has that kind of crisp feeling underneath it? This one feels more like an impossibly hard crayon. Due to whatever material they bonded the graphite with. And because it has some other kind of material besides the graphite, which is some kind of plastic, it has um, a very interesting advantage is that it's very, very difficult to break. You can drop it and you can even... You try real hard, press your fingernail into it and it will leave a very, very tiny impression. It's very vaguely flexible, but I think you could snap it in half if you really wanted to. It says so on the package that it does not break if dropped. And that definitely seems true. The first time I realised this, I thought to myself, wow, they should market this to like the building industry or something. Because the majority of builders use like a traditional builder's pencil, which is a kind of rectangular prism of graphite encased in a little wooden case and they sharpen it and then they drop it and then the graphite breaks in the center and then they sharpen it again and it kind of snaps off and then they keep on sharpening it down until they find a piece which isn't broken and then this would be a lot better and you don't even need to sharpen it to use the thing because the whole thing, besides the rubber, of course, at the end, the eraser, that's what I should call it for people who live elsewhere besides Australia, yes. Yeah, I got distracted there. Um, yeah, the whole thing is made out of the same material. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and also produces a lead shade around about, at least about HB darkness. Uh, possibly halfway between a HB and 2B. No, I'm going to say HB to be safe, actually. Okay, now this is the part of the review where I stop saying overly positive things about it. It's time to get a bit critical about the things that I find strange or confusing that detract from this otherwise pretty cool product. The first thing is this photoluminescence mumbo-jumbo. The first time I saw this, I was like, who on earth needs a pencil which glows in the dark? 
How is that a useful feature? I mean, how many people can you imagine that when there's a power outage, the lights are out and they say to themselves, Oh dear, now I can't find my pencil, so I can draw in the dark. What a tragedy this is. Uh, uh, no one does. I'm, I can be pretty sure. And no one's going to say, Oh, good thing I've got this glow-in-the-dark pencil, so I can find the pencil before I found my torch, which is what I really wanted in the dark. Anyway, if you don't like buying useless features, uh, I'm going to give you two reasons not to worry about it. Perpetua does make like a classic version of the pencil, which it doesn't have a glow-in-the-dark eraser. The other reason not to worry about it is it because the glow-in-the-dark eraser basically doesn't work. It doesn't work on mine. It's basically the worst glow-in-the-dark product I have ever come across. It's so bad that... If it didn't tell me it was glow-in-the-dark on the packaging, I would have... I just would have never have found out. I mean, it took a lot of effort to get this thing to glow. I had to grab my high-powered LED torch, which is so powerful I once accidentally put a hole in my pocket with it. It was just burnt. Anyway, and I had to cook it with that on turbo, and then I actually got some results that I could easily see and film. Here, I'm comparing it to a, um, a useful glow-in-the-dark product that works well, a glow-in-the-dark torch. I give the pencil eraser an unfair advantage, and still, the torch beats it by a long shot. Yeah, I am sort of wondering if I got, like, something from a faulty batch or something. Because most glow-in-the-dark products that have ever come across will glow in the dark if you just leave them in a reasonably well-lit room. This one just needs a bit of extra help, basically. Now, the second thing which I found interesting about this pencil, which was, um, it is pretty well marketed as a environmentally friendly pencil, because it's made out of 80% recycled graphite. That is, yeah, that is 100% of the graphite it uses is recycled, which makes up 80% of the pencil. I think I've described that before, anyway. At first, I looked at this and I thought to myself, like, that's really weird. Because who on earth would be throwing away graphite? Like good graphite powder. Who chucks away that stuff? Because you go onto their, um, Perpetua's website, and they say things like, First, the manufacturer gets a big chunk of graphite, and then they turn it into an electrode, and then they have all this useless graphite powder, which is just ready to go into landfill. But then we save it. Yes, and then we turn it into a pencil, into this patented Zantec technology. And that's all very nice, really. I do love the idea of repurposing things, recycling them. I absolutely hate seeing useful stuff being thrown into landfill. And apparently the company where Perpetua gets their graphite from actually was chucking their graphite powder byproduct into landfill. I don't know why they were doing that. I'm sure there's many buyers for graphite powder out there. I don't know, maybe they're more of a small-scale manufacturer of electrodes, and it was more economical for them to actually throw the graphite away than to find a seller for it. Now, keep in mind, I don't really know anything about manufacturing products, recycling, and the environmental costs of doing so, but I do wonder how environmentally friendly it is to manufacture a product, package it, ship it all around the world, versus taking something as harmless as graphite and just dropping it in the nearest hole. Hmm, back where it used to be. Therefore, it's quite possible that the only way this pencil is environmentally friendly is that if it actually stops you from buying another 20-odd pencils afterwards. And I did two drawings with this pencil, and I barely wore it down at all, really. I tried sharpening it once in my first drawing, and I think I probably removed a good, probably 10, 20 drawings just by sharpening it a tiny piece, so probably last for ages. And I think that's pretty good. Although initially, I didn't actually uh, enjoy drawing with it that much. Eventually, I realized what the problem was, and it's the same problem I have with every single writing implement in existence. If I don't like it, 
It's just that I'm struggling to grip the thing for a long period of time. So I took that cardboard card that it came packaged on, and it has a little rubber band on it. So I took the rubber band and I wrapped it around the pencil, and use it as a bit of a pencil grip, and now it's, it's very enjoyable to use. I really do like it. Unfortunately, it's not going to stop me from buying other pencils, because it's only a bit darker than HB, but if I ever want a HB pencil, I'm quite happy to uh, use this thing. Or I might just use a mechanical pencil, actually. Yes, I could. I quite like mechanical pencils as well. I have, I'm spoilt for choice. I'll use a mechanical pencils for the finer details. I might grab this thing for larger light shading work. Maybe. Anyway. I've got so many other things to draw with. Um, it may take me many, many years to put a dent in the length of this pencil. Okay, that's basically all I have to say. I am now sick of talking, and you are probably sick of listening to me. So, happy drawing, and goodbye.